Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are back with our book of Psalms. And it is Psalm 119. This will take some time to finish. It won't finish in a hurry. I told you it is the longest chapter in the whole Bible. Psalm 119 has 176 verses. And we are just reached at, at verse 16, 1, 6. So now we are on the fourth part, part 4 of Psalm 119. And we go from verses 9, 17 onwards. So we'll carefully keep your Bible open before you. And you can follow along with me. Um, I'm reading from the New King James Version. New King James Version, the open Bible. And from that I'm reading, you keep your Bibles open also. And it says in verse 17, Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. How The psalmist is saying how to deal bountifully with your servant. I'm your servant. Lord, deal bountifully with me means, Lord, have favor upon me. Have patience with me. Show extra affection upon me. That means bountifully with your servant. And what is the, what is, he says after that, in verse 18, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law or from your word. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. And that is what I want to emphasize upon this time. How the Lord will deal bountifully with a servant by opening my eyes. You know, when the eyes of your understanding is opened, you see things that others cannot see. And that is from the word, especially from the word of God. When we look into the word of God, we see some big, great speakers. We have heard, many times we heard Billy Graham. That's a great, renowned speaker. But how is his message? Very simple words, simple words. But what revelation. How convicting the word is. God has revealed through him the wondrous thing that is in his word. Hallelujah. I want to go to uh, the book of Ephesians. And I want to show you something there that Paul prays for the Ephesians believers. In chapter 1 and from verses 18 onwards, it says over here, Saul or Paul is praying for the Ephesians believers, the church which he founded at Ephesus. So that church is praying for the believers and he tells them, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? There are two, three messages coming out here in this one verse. But I want to go to the, back to that verse. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You know, when, the, when our understanding... When only this God can do, only the Holy Spirit is, can do this. When He opens your understanding to understand. If not, we are a people of no understanding. We don't have understanding. So when we begin to understand, the Holy Spirit guides us to understand. There are certain scriptures here. And when He opens our eyes, we see something new out of it. It's happened many times in my own life. When the Lord suddenly opens out my eyes to certain passages in scripture, where there are some things that I have not seen before. Although I read through that portion several times, you read through it several times, but your understanding of that portion of scripture was something different. So unless the Lord opens your understanding or your spirit's eyes, you cannot see. When your eyes are open, you'll be able to see things that normally other people cannot see. You begin to understand things which normally other people cannot understand. They are spirit, spiritually discerned. They have that lack of understanding because the powers of this earth, the king of this, the powers of darkness, the demonic forces, they blind the eyes of man. Jesus says he's a liar, he's a deceiver. He comes to rob, to steal and to destroy. He's a murderer. So what he does, he keeps people in the dark. So they cannot understand the beautiful gospel of Jesus Christ. So that is what Paul is saying. That your, the eyes of your understanding may open. 
And when we open our understanding, we begin to understand what the gospel is all about. What did Jesus come for? What is all, what is all about the cross, the story of the cross? What is so special about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? What is special about the blood of Jesus Christ? How could that cleanse? How could God become man? People keep arguing all these things. It is difficult for us to understand the blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. People keep arguing about all these things. It is because of lack of understanding. You cannot understand with your natural mind. The people of this world in their natural mind try to figure out things. They try to understand and they begin to pull and tug and they begin to make doctrines and divisions. But when the eyes of our understanding is open, very plainly we can understand who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Very, very plainly you can understand who Jesus is. So that is what Paul is saying. If the eyes of your understanding is open, what is the power, what is the calling of God in your life? God has a special purpose. He called us. He separated us. He chose us. And therefore we need the eyes of our understanding to open. And that is what the psalmist says. And it says here, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. That means from your word. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. I am a stranger from this earth. Abraham and the people that were before him, Isaac and Jacob, they said we are sojourners here. We are wanderers here. We are travelers over here. We are pilgrims over here. We are not here. This is not a permanent place. We are passing through. Like that famous singer Jim Reef sings, This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blues. Beautiful stories, song I learned when I was a teenager. So this is the beautiful things it says here. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. Praise the Lord. I am a stranger here. So no matter what you have, what you are, it will all be left behind. They're going to leave it here. We've got a, another place to go to. We have another city. We are citizens of another country, another place. And that is where Jesus has prepared a place for us. We are going there. So let our understandings open. I am going back to the gospel time after time so that your understanding will be open to the word of God. Hallelujah. So it says here in verse 20, My soul breaks with longing for your judgments at all time. You rebuke the proud, the curse who stray from your commandments. Remove from me from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimony. My soul breaks with longing for your judgment at all time. My soul means my spirit is upset. My spirit is disturbed when I am not able to keep up to what you want from me. What you expect of me, I am not able to do. That is the weakness of man. My failures. My failures. And that is why I told you in the beginning of the psalm, we need divine intervention we need divine help we need outside help and that is good help from heavenly help when that person jesus come inside we are able to do that which we cannot do what i told you in part two we need something inside of us to make us strong on the outside hallelujah and that is jesus and that is what the psalmist says Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Hallelujah. You, you rebuke the proud in verse 21. The curse who stray from your commandments. That means the proud people. God does not like proud people. The first sin that was ever committed in heaven, it was pride. Satan, the devil, we know that he was proud. The book of Isaiah says, he says, my throne will be exalted above the throne of God. That means he was such a beautiful creature. His wings would give music. And he was so beautifully created that he became proud. And God does not like that. So it says over here, you rebuke the proud, the cursed. The proud are naturally cursed also. They are cursed people. You know, there is a difference in blessing and cursing. If you go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, you will see how God blesses and how God curses. 
there is more curse than blessing than blessing. So it says over here that you rebuke them, you, you don't like them, you curse them who stray from your commandment. Because when we go off the way, off the road, then we become proud, we become cursed. We can do it on our own. We can do it, we can go on our own. We don't need anyone. I know what I'm doing. So when we do that, we don't need the help of God, means we go astray. And we cannot do it on our own. It says over here, who strays from your commandment. That is how we go astray. So teach your children also the word of God. Because when they study the word of God, then they will keep in the way of God. Hallelujah. I remember people of old, in our younger days, our people of our olden days, they would say that if you don't read your Bible, no breakfast for you. Those days are gone. Now they have become so busy. The children are so busy with uh, one tuition to the next tuition, one school to the next school, one class to the next class. They have time for everything but not to read the word of God. So now parents are not so strict. Parents are also become one with the children. And they're so busy, they're so busy. And the lack of word of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It is the word of God that keeps them and gives them the wisdom to do the right thing. So it says over here, remove from me, sorry, who stray from your commandments. Verse 22 says, remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Hallelujah. In verse 23 it says, princes also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statues. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. Hallelujah. Princes also sit down together and they speak against me. Actually, it doesn't matter even ministers go against you. As long as you know that your relationship with your maker is right. Vertically, if your, if your communication is right, if your contact is right, if your life is right vertically, you don't have to worry about the horizontal. Don't worry about things around you. Keep this contact right. And that is God. So that is what the psalmist says. Princes also sit and speak about me, <clears throat> against me. But your servant meditates on your word. That means whatever they say around me, princes are great people also, but my contact is there. And when my line and my contact with my maker is okay, it doesn't matter what others' opinion is about me. As long as his opinion for me is right. May God bless you with our fourth part. We'll come back again with the fifth part. God bless you.